Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Another Ulti TV broadcast here at EUCF 2022 Mixed Division Grand Final. I'm Stefan Rapazzo, delighted to be with Benjamin Reese once again for this mixed final. I will see how you're doing, Benji. How are you this morning, this afternoon, rather? The sun is shining. We've had two great finals already. I've even put on a shirt. There is nowhere else I'd rather be. Nowhere at all. We are in. We got the best seats in the house next to the Alti TV winner circle. We'll see who the next invitees are. We got Amsterdam, Young Guns, Good. up against Reading, the more with a bit more veteranship there. What else do we know about these combatants in front of us, Benji? Good. I think coming into the week were very much the favorites and perhaps presumed champions, but uh, it's always optimistic to crown things before it plays out on the field, as we have seen this week. And if there's any team historically in Europe that has traditionally had Hrut's number, it is Reading. Maybe that little extra veteran experience and savvy, the ultimate IQ comes through. Hrut undefeated so far this tournament and haven't necessarily really been pushed. Only the, only, the only push would have been, perhaps? Would have been Reading, but that was actually the very first game of the pool stage. And uh, Hrut were 9-6 up when the storm clouds rolled in, lightning delay of the field. Half an hour, we're ready, we're ready to get started again, back out there, and lightning comes back again, and the games have to be called, so we would never know how that would have played out in the end. But for Reading, maybe a bit of a measure of revenge, because since then, they have steamrolled the rest of the pool and uh, really put a, put a very good leftover side that was undefeated in Pool B they, they really put them to the sword and they battered their way through into this final and the rematch against Hrut. Did they ever? We, we've seen Reading three times on the stream. This is their fourth appearance. Obviously, those Reading fans are uh, pushing those buttons, subscribing, liking, and becoming Patreons for all this coverage you get of your home team. And like you said, Benji, they've just been getting stronger and stronger as this competition goes on. Uh, these teams match up really well. Uh, as, as you said, again, the... the pre-tournament favorites were Groot. Everybody's trying to get to that level, match them. Uh, and the Groot style with their, their, you know, they're very up and down the field, their end zone to end zone play. They don't mind to stretch things out because they've got this array of athleticism across the board. But if there's a team here that can match up against that, some big bodies, some athletic uh, ability, specifically on the defensive side, some speeds, some speed and, and some players who can really read in the air. It's this Reading team. It's, it's more than a battle of youth versus experience. It relies some of the incredible athletes on both sides and some of the IQ on both sides. It's been a long season for both, representing, of course, at World Clubs in Cincinnati, coming through their respective regions to be here at EUCF. And it's been even a bit longer for Reading because a couple of these players were representing at the World Masters Ultimate Club Championships in uh, Limerick earlier in this year, where OTTV was. And Bex Palmer was also on the GB World Game Squad as well. So both of these sides have played a lot of Ultimate this season. Connor Hogan on the line with the rest of his O-line compatriots we will speak about. Yesterday he was uh, giving t tidbits of insight, something along the line, how it was time to teach this youth a lesson. I mean, uh, I think he used more colorful language, but... Possibly, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, best we don't repeat that on stream. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, underway mixed final, the penultimate in this ultimate European Championship, Connor Hogan with the disc to start things off. Diving marks. Already you see the nerve. People want this. Lewis wearing the Withers jersey gets the disc. Hogan. Underneath to Roberts. Has a look. She goes big. She's not afraid. Lewis there. Defense in front. Good body by Lewis to stay in front of Ten Hagen and open up with a goal. Lewis is such a key cog for Reading, offensively, defensively. He can stretch the field with his throws, and he's more than happy going deep as well, as you saw there, the two number sevens for the moment, boxing out against each other. And Lewis gets the better of Ten Harkin. Uh, well played by Lewis there. Is a uh, bit of veteran savvy out of him. 
He's a he's he's no diminutive receiver by any stretch, but was dwarfed slightly by Ten Hagen. He had early position, used that body really, really well, as we see again there, and uh, and read it just as it uh, blipped over Ten Hagen's head there. Yeah, Lewis was a uh, part of the side that won uh, gold for GB Mixed out in EUC in that crazy final against France that you commentated, of course, with Joe Hamer. Indeed, that was a crazy final. Yeah, uh, also on the also on this team on that was uh, Bex Palmer as well and. Uh, Andy Lewis also uh, gold medalist last year at EUCF with Clapham but coming back to the mixed division for the Worlds and for the European season this year. Well, he has an opportunity to get one up on Clapham after they have had to settle for the silver medal but here we are second point of the mixed final. Blashman picks up Van der Weyden flanked. Van der Weyden fresh off his return from Australia, playing with Sunder there for more than a season. Van der Weyden, there is company, but well read. Janssen waits it over the defender. Yeah, Hagen taking an aggressive line to get the block there, but getting caught too far underneath it. Kaulatz, Blasman up line, far sideline. Bignall on the mark, engage dump, and Van der Weyden gets it in the reset space. Straight back to Blasman. Switch on the D. And centering again to Vanden Weiden. Development downfield slow. We have not seen a Benjamin Ort touch yet. He's open in the end zone. And as I said, he drags his toe and gets the Dutch squad on the board for the first time in the game. And the old kick spike to punt it away as well in celebration. But maybe one or two slightly sticky moments but they didn't necessarily ever look too flustered by it. It's always interesting early on in the game, how do you play? Because there is that little bit of metaphorical and also sometimes literal feeling out process. Obviously, they've played earlier in the tournament and a lot of times over the years, so there will be various indications of how much contact they're happy with already, but you do still kind of reestablish that at the start of the game. And this one, they're just cramming it down the open side, little toss pass and the toe drag swag from Ben Ault for the goal. And Mark Bignall instantly signaling that, yep, yeah, goal is good. I agree. You guys got us that one. Uh, these games are always tight, but as far as, I've, as far as I've ever seen, always well-spirited as well. Always well-spirited. The pull comes down from Groot. And our Reading side will have a second chance to hold. Connor Hogan. Wide open in the dump space, Codron. She throws for a gainer. Wilson comes under safely. They set that isolation up brilliantly. Wilson had so much space. Andy Lewis. Wilson far sideline. Stall count mounting. Around comes out to Roberts. Oh, the bid. What a sneaky poach there. Some contact, but a excellent looking step for, with vision. Yeah, Epstein was ready and waiting for that. That time, maybe just not clearing out from that far sideline quick enough. And that allowed Epstein to come and flash in here through the block. There is going to be the discussion, maybe a bit of contact with Hogan coming across the pass potentially could be the call. Spoke about Sam Wilson. Uh, his brother, Ben, not on the field. He's been uh, unfortunately ill this tournament, as has Holly Cardwell. So unable to suit up for a Reading side. And those are two uh, significant losses for a squad that doesn't necessarily carry as many players as some other teams we've seen at the tournament. And yeah, hopefully they are, what I imagine they're watching at home, cheering on their charges. Big shout out to them. We know they're watching. Andy Lewis before the game uh, requested that very same shout out that Benji is just uh, so tuned in. He knew naturally to give, but they are watching and uh, their team wants to say hi. And of course we want to say hi. We'd love it. We hope you're getting well and you're back for the next one. Two sides still engaged in discussion here about the call. There are scorekeepers on the far sideline who will be, uh, yeah, they're kind of blowing whistles periodically to remind players to keep to time limits. Uh, the result looks like it is a retracted foul call. So first turner of the game goes Grit's way. Epstein. Oops. Forward to Dam. 
Lola Dam fakes again. Nobody mounting stall count. High release backhand forward to Morrison. Immediately in the red zone. Good continuation. Lola Dam now, two meters out, near corner, centered, Epstein. Looking open side only and gets a cut there. Defense beat by Morrison. And Amsterdam with a break, Benji. Really patient red zone possession there. Fakhrut got it down there nice and early, but didn't force it. Waited for a good opportunity to come. Happy to reset it. And in the end, Mawson just has his man straight beat to that open side cone. Mawson, by the way, you may think, that jersey's looking a little bit worse for wear. Well, it turns out, if you, uh, if you wash your kit at 90 degrees, it doesn't come out particularly well. That Here's, is incredible. Yeah, I, I don't even realize they had 90 degree settings, but there you go. There's the replay of the score. Nothing his matchup could do. Nobody notices when he's scoring goals, but in between we will. Now you know me. I've got a, I've got an eye for detail. I, I I fancy myself as a bit of you, a bit of a, a uniform savant. So that's a that's a, a big red flag in anyone's book, I think. Big red flag. I uh, I also fancy myself in the same regard, Benji. It uh, when team uniforms are not completely uniform, I notice right away and when people wear their own uh, accessories that are out of color c colorway that drives me nuts sometimes too but that's just me big null set sail lewis comes under reading ultimate gave up a break early can they recover with a hold not there they can't jitters shown Lawrence Hill throws to turf, and they go the other way. Ted Hacken goes backwards. Now Dam, backhand towards the end zone. A play was needed, and she got it. Centered. Dernstern pops one over. Lola Dam makes a play to a damn fine play. High-handed layout, that one's in, but there's a pick called Benji. What a shame as well, it was, it was a brilliant grab. They're saying the pick did not affect, goal stands, never gonna be able to keep up in that space with Dam on the break side and beside. Baldol was right behind her for a simple cap catch. And uh, we actually saw this in the semi-final against Disconnection yesterday, that Lola Dam made a crazy saving layout that she had no need to do because there was a player right behind. But that's the sort of player Lola Dam is. See disc, get disc. Wow. It's that simple. Did she ever see and get in this instant? There's the first play. Yeah, Bardol, just that really well because sometimes you see the layout and it's, it's difficult to work out when do I fully commit to it that time. She stays upright long enough so that it's not in that awkward spot where it's kind of right underneath you. And then again, another good red zone possession. Oh. I mean, come on, come Lola. On, Lola. Genuinely, Dan. in that red zone, I don't know if there's a better player, not just in this division, but in all divisions oh than Lola goodness. Dam. She's just lethal. A lethal athlete. She's got all the throws and she can do everything with a disc in her hand, but her playmaking ability to go and get that disc as a defender, as a scorer is, yes, it's very unique. One of the best, if not the best in this division. Redding. This now the third kick at that can. They shoot deep. And up and over the defense comes Lester. Can't get under it. But there's probably going to be a call here as the incoming defender took a piece. Here's another look. Epstein. The crossing defender. Oh, he really got in front there. I'm not sure that was a foul. And Redding have agreed in the end. I know this is, I, I think I've said this a number of times. If you're not sure about something, make the call, have the discussion. Because if you say, okay, you know what? It wasn't a foul. You can always retract it and we're good to go again. 
here we go again. Groot get their break line on that one over, but Morrison has a chance to catch up. He does, spins those wheels. Boom. That has the scent of a pick all over it. Suspiciously open there. The scent, indeed. Slob's cut will have to come back into their vertical stack attack. Slob gets it anyways. Second under, boss. Oh, the recentering doesn't work. Got stuck in her fingers there on release. Yeah, she did look a little bit panicked on the disc. Didn't necessarily seem as, as calm as we've seen her at previous points this tournament and some of her teammates look this game. Hogan to Roberts. It's the first time that Hrur have turned it over, by the way. Roberts have gone deep. There's lots of company, but Andy Lewis, goodness gracious, he makes a play over everyone. There's some contact because Morrison's holding his shoulder, but what a play, Benji. That's the sort of thing that he can do. You see it again now on the replay. Players converge underneath it. I don't think Lewis contact, uh, and it might be that he contacts him on the landing. They were saying that the catch is good, but it's not in the end zone just yet. Lewis with a dish shot for goal. That one counts. Wilson cashes in and they get away with a hold. Positive for Reading, again, not a clean hold, but it all counts the same. And for the first time, you have put Hrut under a bit of defensive pressure and you've earned a turnover. Admittedly, it wasn't for a break. It was to earn it back after you turned it over yourself. It wasn't from your D-line either. Yes, but again, getting into this game, the last thing you want when you're facing a team, the quality of Hrut, is to have that big lead built up early, especially for a side that often, you know, rides the wave and brims with confidence, as Hutt does. If you let them get a big lead, they're nigh on impossible to peg back. So you keep yourself in touch, keep it close, maybe force them into some errors and see if they can get a little bit insular on themselves. Insular, that's where Groot needs to be if you're in a Reading mindset. Uh, what they have done is put their D-line on the field. And that's a nice thing to do as well. You can't get those breaks back unless your O-line punches it in. Exactly. Palmer to pull. Yep, yeah, using a gender ratio rule A, which is AB, the, aka the ABBA rule. Mama so mia. after the first point, you uh, switch the, uh, switch the quite unquote dominant on pitch gender every other point to kind of guarantee that you're getting even play time between male and female matching players. And also using the prescribed puller rule, which, which is whichever gender has four players on the field for each side has to pull. So in this case, you saw Bex Palmer pulling because we have four female and three male matching players. Blasman to Ort, far sideline. Ort jacks it right away. Cowlart's there with separation. She gets up and handles it with ease. Very uh, efficient there, Benji. It's so difficult to mark up against Krit because you look at some of the players on the line, it's like, who do you put your best defender on? Because whoever you don't is going to see that and see if they can isolate it. Ought to Coulart has worked so many times down the years. And uh, it's kind of, it's never a surprise when it comes off again. This is classic Krit, the big deep bomb from the hands of Ort. Klima's in coverage against Kulartz, but nothing she could do about that one. Bit of a honey pass there. Looking good, not the first time they've done that. Like you said, who do you cover? How do you manage these matchups? There's so many that can uh, damage against on the grid line, even after one of their best has uh, left the squad for the tail end of this season. Walt Janssen, not with Groot. Yeah, no, Walt Janssen, uh, Joris Stenica is actually wearing Walt Janssen's jersey, if you see it out there. He had a huge game in the semi-final. And uh, Anne Minard, who's the, usually the kind of, the more steadying presence for Groot's offense, is, uh, is not here either. Andy Lewis with the disc. Engages, dump, takes it very quickly, and Roberts now moving the other way. And that one thrown right into the defense. Yeah, just 
maybe Coward slowed down a little bit. Either way, it allowed Slope to storm through and knock it to the floor. And they're just checking the disc to make sure it's okay. And we're back in play. Sen Hagen engages, nobody there. Stanica. Stanica for goal. That one to Slope on the, go on the doorstep here. Right to Dam, immediate, no hesitation. And Lola Dam gets another goal early in this game. Reading's offense just seems a little bit, not static or stagnant, but everything is so tight. The credit doing a very good job, I think. They're trying to make sure that Reading can't get these, you know, these clear pull plays, the, you know, the big isolation setup that they like, and they're having to kind of play it a bit more organically. That time they clear the space for this underneath cut from Coward, but I think maybe because they're thinking about that handler defender on the far side, poaching into that lane a little bit, it's just on the back shoulder, and that allows a, a slope to, uh, to get the block, and then here, just on the goal line, floats this one out into space, and as soon as it's got beyond Roberts, there's nothing she can do, and it's Lola Dam again for the Lola goal. Dam. <laughs> It's, uh, she, threw to, uh, she threw to a great space on the field. And then, with all that space, you see Lola Dam at the end, the sure-handed receiver. That was uh, a great choice, an easy choice, and a great quick choice. Morrison with the pull. Going for that inside-out backhand. Bignall settling deep, Hogan. Brilliant pull that from Mawson. Has to be said. Bignall, upfield Andy Lewis. Had a look at the streaking brown, but didn't take. Lewis, continuation, Leicester. A big hook over to Joe Brown. And he wants, he wants the return favor. Hogan, Bignall, and Lewis all at the back end of this offensive attack right now. Hogan, they're going sideline to sideline. Bignall to Lewis. Lewis to Bignall in deep in the dump space. Using the sideline now. Hogan, Redding very patient against this zone that will not transform itself. Lewis to Bignall. A meter out, dump pass. Codron goes around to Joe Brown, Bignall in the middle. This is so calm and composed for Reading. They always got, feels like they've got players free. They're stretching the field over the top, utilizing the full width. Sometimes with these zones, when you get close to the end zone and spaces at premium, it's tricky to find those three players. But Reading, relatively unflustered so far. What a, what a sticky set of hands there by Nicole Lester to hang on. Patience, patience, patience. And then the shot for goal, a little bit spicy. Sometimes as a downfield player against the zone, especially with the way Redding are playing it, you have to be content that I'm probably not going to get the disc that much. That's fine. As long as I'm dragging players out of spaces, as long as I'm sitting in a space where I'm hittable and I'm a threat, then you can let the other players go to work. You know that just got to be alert on your toes because there's always the chance that that shot's coming. The defense did a very good job, that has to be said. As much as Redding was patient and waiting, uh, they went side to side. They didn't have many opportunities to kind of strike through the middle and bust up the zone. They, they had to chip and chisel away at it. Redding had to slow play it, but if you want to kind of test Redding's patience, I think generally they're pretty happy with that. They, uh, yeah, especially when there's no wind like this. They've got big arms all over the field. Not a problem for them. And Mawson there on the back of the end zone. Leicester, good focus with a defender bearing down towards her. But I like that M Mawson didn't fully commit because if he had done, it would have been a pretty sizable collision, I think. Van der Weyden goes forward. Whitcomb moves it up. Blasman. Blasman goes for the gainer. Orts there under duress, but handles. Too high for Cowlarts. And that one goes to ground. Redding with their first chance to break. And they go for it in one shot. Marius Hutchinson sends deep. There are two receivers in the area. Well played there by Coons. And then it's straight in for the goal. 
and Reading celebrate their break. Put there with the pull play, going with the side stack. Couple of players cleared out. Blastman came through for the underneath and then getting it off. You can see oh, looking for cool arts, but yeah, just popped that one up a little bit. Over, tried to adjust, couldn't get there. And Hutchison clearly had the license to shoot on the turn. Picked it up, immediately ripped it. Coons got a good look on it early. As it drew over towards this near side, took it away from the defender. And then outside the end zone, here we go, we see it again. It's just so early, he, he locates where that's going to go. And Hutchison's another one of these big throwers. Again, that left handedness as well, so sometimes difficult for defenders and, and receivers to adjust to. And then Coons just sits down on the forehand. Palmer streaks to the back of the end zone. First break for Reading. First break of the game. We needed one in the other direction. Reading can keep their D line on the field. Obviously, they will change a couple faces up. Yeah, Reading maybe don't play as tight O and D lines as some other teams. Happy to cross players over as needed. Good. Ben Ort with a disc in hand, center of the field, around to Lola Dam. She wound up and then dumps back to Ben Ort. Ort underneath through traffic, Van de Weyden. Ort wanted again, Bignall stepped off but couldn't get a piece. Ort winds up again. Tra almost travels, gives it to Van de Weyden and on the move, gets it back immediately. Ben Ort goes around to Kowlarts. That time they connect. Kowlarts centers, Blasman. Van der Weyden gets his defender off the feet and Lola gets it in front of Bex Palmer. Great match up there. Lola Dam centering to Blasman. Blasman to Janssen. On the doorstep now, shot for goal. Flat floor, Kowlarts collects. Put there, there was a decent part of it where Everything looked a little bit static and stagnant downfield, and they weren't really generating a lot of movement there. But that's fine because they were able to reset through the handler space, and they're also not just, okay, we'll reset and we'll stay focused downfield. It's like we're not seeing anything. Let's just give go a little bit, give cutters a bit more of a chance to move around, change the angles of attack before we put our foot down on the gas again. Van der Weyden, without a round break, just suckled, suckered Ryle in, I think, a little bit there, getting cheating too much to the open side. And then utilizing the full width of the pitch, Dam goes across to Blasman. Blasman finds Yanni Jansen and squeezing that one down the line. Hagen beaten to the spot there by Fluorkli Larts and Kritz reopening their two point lead at six to four. Six four. Redding put their O line back out there. Lola Dam sends the pull. Hogan picks up and Redding are underway. Lewis. Lewis gets the under from Wilson. Two hands, safe as houses. Lewis engaged, but sneaks the other way to Roberts. He put a lot of zip on that one. Good catch by Roberts. Roberts to Hogan. Handy windmill catch there. Wilson underneath. Sniffing at that end zone now. Over the shoulder to Lewis. Over the shoulder again to Roberts, and they're in. They get the hold, Bench. Lovely disc movement there. Coming out with the pool play, clearly getting Lewis isolated in that space underneath. Wilson made the deep strike off of that. I thought it could have gone, but maybe if you're a couple of, po couple of breaks down, you're just going to try and play it a bit more conservatively. But it really got the commitment from the defender there, Ten Haken, and that opened up the space from the underneath for Wilson. And then nice little resets as well. They're going for some off hands, sometimes some little zipped insides as well. Really giving the giving the mark lots to think think about it's not we're always looking for the around or we're always looking for the inside using all the tools in the locker and then this just little cushioned backhand into space for roberts who's uh yeah who's no who's no mug in the in the red zone either has a real nose for goal at times and bringing it back within one 
Looking strong there, our Redding. Marius Hutchison set to pull. D-line knowing that they've got a job to do, playing from behind even in the first half. Hutchison. A World Games training squad member. Ort now the other way. Fakes everybody out there. Then he gets Whitcomb. Janssen fakes the big emphatically centers to Ort rather stays on that line Ort to Van Weiden that one's in and good attack remains very efficient looking that time just working it down the open side don't need to bother about breaking the force if they can beat you to that beat you to that spot and obviously as a defender you're so focused on stopping that open side but those fakes you have to commit enough as well you help move downfield you help move defenders and around downfield with the fakes from the handler if they're kind of keeping that in the vision it's why having those purposeful fakes are very important because if you can get that real snap on the disc it does get everyone biting they does you know kind of subconsciously suck them in and this one a lovely leading blade to Larko van der Weyden who as you mentioned back for Grut here after representing Santa out in WUCC so obviously we've got a lot of Sydney Siders in Australia watching, What's cheering, up? cheering on their old uh, compatriot. You're, uh, you are a noted Australian, sort of. Yes, sort of, kind of. What's the time difference between here and Sydney right now? Oh man, I don't know, Benj. I think it's like eight hours or something, maybe more. I, I actually unofficially won my first ever Australian championship in Cincinnati when Is No Good beat all three Australian teams on Universe Point. Does that count as an Australian national championship, Benji? Given that you're not Australian, I'm going to say no. I played nine and a half No, I mean, there. Is No Good. Okay, fine. Connor Hogan. Uh, I think that, so that he's taking it to the brick mark, so I guess Krit were offside. Must be that landed in bounds and walked to the brick mark, and that doesn't happen uh, without an offside. So well spotted, Benji, as always. Andy Lewis, Roberts. Roberts goes under to Wilson. Upline cut from Hill, almost trotted in, but not quite. Lawrence Hill. Outside in, Andy Lewis easily gets that reception. And Redding with a nice, efficient uh, attack there. Going down the open side as well. Saw what Hurt's plan was and thought that they wanted a piece of that. Big yard gainer there as well. Coming off the, uh, coming off, of course, that brick pull again. Getting it on that sideline, which is the full sideline. So Hurt may be happy with that. But a wonderful shake and bake in the handler space from, from Lawrence Hill. Think of him, you know, doing his damage from the backfield. And I think maybe just uh we get here's a replay of the offside on the pool Ooh. i mean i'm yeah not there's a step there who's white pants is that ben no 15. that is uh boom. boom i think and then you see because of the because of wary of the threat poses in the backfield takes the opportunity to plow up line and then just floats this one out for the big man Lewis to make the catch. Nice work there from the uh, from the University of Sussex alum. Have to get that in there. I'm sorry, it's like it's part of my contract. Always got to get that in there. <laughs> Go Hawks. Love it, Ben. Not that I have any biases or anything. Never. There's, <laughs> those don't exist in the booth. Speaking of which, we do have Dutch commentary. We do for, indeed. Yeah, we for got any of you who uh, want to watch your compatriots if you are Dutch speaking. Uh, check out the Alti TV YouTube channel and find our Dutch feed. I must Johan and Finn doing the feed there. I must admit, there are times when, uh, even if there is English commentary available, I will listen to the commentary in other languages because it's just sometimes it's just you know it's just more interesting and entertaining. Ben Ort goes around to Dam. She pops up and over. Janssen can't handle it because it's too far outside. Just losing the fitting there. This, uh, although it's very hot and dry today, a little bit of humidity in the air. We had a torrential rainstorm a couple of days ago, and it has made these fields kind of heavy ground, and it has churned them up a little bit. 
Uh, Redding with a very valuable break chance. And didn't take the, the big, did Big Noel. Gets it back, Bex Palmer now with the disc. A very attractive score like a come. What a pickup, a save by Ryle. Wow, and he's gone deep. Big Noel's there, as are two great defenders, but Big Noel gets big, and we've got a very interesting score line in front of us right now, Benji. We've got sevens, and it's Galaxy Point that time. They had a big deep cut going, uh, going downfield, maybe from Knight. Uh, Ork came off to cover it. That opened up the space for Ryle in the middle, who spotted that opportunity well. They got it to him, worked it over to the far side, and then I think just a miscommunication in the backfield. Here's the first turnover from Hritz that, uh, yeah, despite her best efforts, Janssen couldn't reel in. And then I think Palmer's expecting the help in the backfield. Maybe there's the collision there between Knight and Blasman, but Danny Ryle, oh man. Oh my goodness. Getting his teammates all riled up with that one, and how could you not? Danny Ryle, I remember the first tournament I ever covered uh, was back in 2015. He was representing uh, GB Mixed uh, in the Under-23 World Championships in London that year. Just, he was so good that week, and he kind of yeah, wasn't a, had struggled a little bit with injuries at the time. Good to see him back fit and firing and going to Bignall in the end zone. I mean, hey, he's not... That is throwing your body around with reckless abandon. That is what we're here to watch, the best in Europe. He's not called Mark Smallnall, is he? <laughs> let's, let, let's be real here. That was bad. I will accept that. Uh, I, uh, you're, you're getting kicks out of me, Benji. That pole goes out of bounds on Galaxy Point. It will be walked to the brick mark. Of course, we'll be receiving to begin the second half. So the old two for none opportunity here. Two possessions back to back without your opposition getting one. If they can punch this in. And that's uh, given how tight this game is, that's a sizable if at this point. That's a big old if. Blasman checks it in on the spot. Ort goes big early and it goes up. He's in front and that counts. That was quick and easy for Galaxy Point. A little bit of an edge spike there and to take the half. Hey, Route 1 Wimbledon Long Ball Ultimate. It's, it, I'll be honest, this is, this is straight out of the, uh, out of the My First Ultimate playbook. It's a bit like a classic zipper. Just get someone at the front of the stack, everyone else clears out and or just powers off deep. Coons maybe shading under a little bit there. Or sees that, thank you very much, goes deep. Nothing Ryan Coons can do and that is about as quick and as ruthless as you can be on a Galaxy Point situation. By the way, huge shout out to all of our new patrons who are being one of the gang, helping us bring free live ultimates to the masses. Ida, Yana, the Maya Bottlings, we appreciate, and everyone else who has subscribed, be it new or old, Thank you for spreading free Live Ultimate, allowing us to do what we love and bringing you three sensational finals here at UCF 2022. Uh, we're going to take a little break with the teams out there for the halftime. Don't you go anywhere, of course. Our Ulti TV winner's circle at the end of the game. Let's see these champions celebrate. Stay with us for everything. We'll be right back very soon. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world. And share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.
holds up from Hutchinson, second half. The bonus Benji was talking about, Groot held and received the pull again. Can they get the double-double? Janssen wanted the break, but goes back to center. Sends out to Ort. Ort gives and goes, Lola Dam wanted the switch, didn't get it. Ort goes around, Van der Weyden. Blashman, he takes a couple meters, but catches it very low. He nearly over milked that one. Over milker. Ort gets it again, pick on the play. Ort has it tapped in. Fires straight away, Lola Dam there, and her four shirt gets a look before that of Klima's, and they're back on the board. Lola Dam in the end zone. It's, you know. First time ever. We could, we could almost have a soundboard for it at this point to save ourselves the hassle. And it's, it's tricky because we, we know about it, but stopping it is, is, is something else, as you see there. Down the field, again, the only real problem they had was when, that, uh, was when the milk from Blasman nearly curdled into some, into some fine cheese, but... He kept his milking hands clean. There's a nice little give-go from Ort, getting it on the underneath to Dam. Dam doing the right thing there, seeing Ort running through, making the catch, already seeing the play develop in front of him, so he knows the options, didn't see anything. Got that swing across to Blasman, Blasman down the line, and eventually Lola Dam in the end zone feels like a bit of an feels like, I'll put my teeth back in, a bit of an inevitability at times. There Indeed we go. it does. Although, having said that, you know, it's not like Hrit have been flawless because Reading have got a couple of breaks of their own in this game. So I don't think this is a done and dusted deal. Not at all. They know they can do it. That's the biggest key to the early breaks. It's in their capacity. Hogan. Sidelines. Kadron gets it forward. Wilson and then back to Kadron. Lewis comes under. Stanaker breathing down his neck. Sent deep. Hogan there. Hogan's got just enough. What a left hand pickup by Connor Hogan and R Ranala going nuts supporting their Irishman. Way to go, Hoagie. Great feet for a big man as he gets down low with the layout. You love to see it. So there are players like this who you just, when they go downfield, you take your eyes off them subconsciously. You underestimate them. And Hoagie proves that that is a big mistake as he comes up with a jersey full of mud and the disc for the score. It's a big day for the Irish. Ranala cheering on their compatriot. Let's have another look at this. I tell you Lewis. what, this is a highlight maker of a pass from Lewis. Hogan has the separation and oh, oh wow. that is that is sumptuous Honor. doing oh, the pinched yeah. fingers here in Italy. Mamma mia, what a grab. Eight, nine, score line. Did, do you think he slowed down slightly so he could go for the full extension layout? <laughs> I, I don't think so, but you never know. He's a veteran. He might be playing us all. It's just that easy for him out there, Connor Hogan. Groot, back the other way. Can they silence the energy builder that Connor just gave them? Van de Weyden. Janssen. Janssen centers to Van der Weyden. Largo floats one up for Ort. Ort all the way to the other side to Blasman. Defense slow to catch up. Blasman really does take every blade of cross he can with those throws, doesn't he? Blasman taps in. Lola Dam with all sorts of space. Playing in the backfield, back to Blasman. Blasman to Ort, inching their way to that red zone now, shot for goal. Van de Weyden 
puts his foot down and they easily respond. Hrit are not the Hrit of old when they first burst onto the scene. Probably the best part of half a decade ago now, where it was all about the big play. This time, they are more than happy to reset, take the swings, those leading passes if they need to, and just flow it more, more naturally into the end zone, rather than just going for that swashbuckling style that we have traditionally associated with them. This one is just classic swinging, using the full length of the pitch, getting the defender to overcommit over one way, and then putting it out into space for someone to just to chase down comfortably. That time it's Locker van der Weyden. By the way, this game has been so clean, with the exception of the point when Reading held to make it 3-2. Every, every point has seen a maximum of one turnover. We've only had one point in the entire game where both sides have turned it over. That's how clean this game has been. They're, both sides are putting on a clinic out there. Clinical indeed. Tidy, tidy, ultimate EUCF grand final, mixed division, to be expected. Uh, conditions are still, they're not going to get in the way, no eighth defender today. Big Null and Redding need a hold. Lewis, back to Big Null. Big Null sees Lewis middle of the field. Two-player game to initiate this offense. Bex Palmer comes under. Palmer widen around to Bignall. Bignall straight back to Roberts. Playing at midfield are Redding. There is a centering gainer to Palmer and sideline to Wilson. Wilson gets Bignall. Doesn't like the Lewis cut and goes the other way. Roberts coming under. Efficient looking here from Redding. Taking wise options and wow. When they, they need a play and they get a play from Bex Palmer now to Big Null. Roberts made it work for that one. Big Null into Wilson, doorstep, and he gets it straight back. Reading goal, they're down by one again. When these two sides matched up on day one in that, in that you know, lightning affected game that uh, Hrit won 9 6, Mark Big Null wasn't here yet. He had could, could Big Null be the difference? He could be a difference, certainly. That time, again, generally looks pretty calm from Reading, swinging it back and forth. The only slightly dicey moment was that, but when you're throwing to Bex Palmer, I don't know if it's ever really that much heart in mouth, to be honest. <laughs> she makes a living of making plays. And then there, Bignall, using that leftiness, stepping rather than out, a bit forward to get it around the mark and continuing the run into the end zone, past Mawson for the goal. Bex Palmer, come off it, man. Come off it. This is, this is honestly, oh, we've, had, we've had games with, you know, bigger upsets, maybe bigger storylines so far, but this, I think, might be the highest quality game that we've seen in terms of the level that these sides are playing at offensively. We're getting a show. We ask the teams before the game every time to put that show on for us. And so far, they've risen to the occasion on both sides. Um, whenever these two sides match up, you get a banger. It just, it just happens. Alti TV bringing you bangers all weekend long. This is the last of them all. Or it goes, everybody switches. Front of the, the front of the stack, deep cut, fooled nobody this time. Good communication there by Reading to pass that off nice and early. Van der Weyden. Network goes again, but the disc can't get there. Blasman. Whitgum. Wanted the wide around. Ort backed Wire. himself there, even if uh, even if Blasman was a little bit hesitant. Ort comes under again. Spent a lot of time upfield, then he jacks it. Cowlard's there in front, and she read it perfectly, did Floor Cowlard's. Absolute money. You can cash that in at the bank. The same honey pass we saw earlier. Cashed in again. 11-9. Or with the assist on that play. I mean, it, so often it's or, it's or to Coulart's as it has been down the years. This one to the back of the end zone. There's not a huge amount of separation there. Let's be real. Hagen's doing a really good job. But it's the edge on the throw that does this because it takes it over Hagen and out of her reach. And Coulart can just stride that down to the, towards the back of the end zone for the score.
So 10, nine, uh, sorry, not 10, eight, 11, nine, just got temporarily uh, back in time there. Again, just those couple of breaks that are leading. Reading haven't turned it over since Krupp broke to make it 5-2. Well taken pull by Codron. Andy Lewis, far sideline. Connor Hogan, the playmaker. Interesting, he was back to that point. They were giving him that handler space and yeah, he'll be happy with that. Lester. Roberts. Redding, high stall count up the line. Hogan again, he can't do it this time. Steneker help defense comes. Steneker had a huge game against Disconnection in the, in the semi-final. He was all over the field, hunting blocks, getting it done after the turn as well. This time, he picks that help defense up nice and early and I, I see Hogan's point there. It does look like Steneker gets the position, but he does give you know, it does come right into Hogan's path. He takes the position. In this in this scenario, is there anything Hogan can do to avoid contact? <sighs> That's a tough one. He's got a head full of steam. He's chasing the same thing. His angle was the intended angle of pursuit. Does that mean it's the defenders? The onus is on the defender to not get into that same space from a, a, a foreign angle. Uh, yeah, Seneca could, could maybe have taken a better angle to uh, it there. It's it's an interesting discussion, one that's worth having for the players. Indeed it is. Uh, uh, my humble opinion is it is a foul. It did cause the difference. If I'm in Connor Hogan's shoes, I feel I was running that down and the hand that got in front of me, got in front of me went through me. Although we've said it before and, you know, we'll say it again, not necessarily this game, but in the future. What we think is not the important issue. It's what the players, it's what the players think. Coming to a resolution in the end that everyone is happy with and playing on. It'd be really interesting to know what our Dutch commentators thought of it. Uh, they're saying no foul, turnover stands, call retracted. No foul, turnover stands, call retracted, Groot disc. Okay, Connor Hogan, not that excited about succumbing to it. This time, see, a lot of the time you see, you know, people kind of be like, it's been 30 seconds, we're not going to come to a resolution, we'll just send it back. And actually, if a lot of the time I think it's a little bit premature because there are, op there are times when actually having that slightly, having a bit more time to talk it through, think about it, properly see perspectives. You know, you do, you do get the, the accepted fouls, the, the retracted foul calls. It's not just it's been enough time, contest it, that'll do. Slob comes under, and the counter-attack from Groot sets sail. As I mentioned, that's Reading's first turnover since Krupp broke to make it 5-2. And that was, I'm going to do quick maths here, 13 points ago. There's a long time of Frisbee ago, and Reading stepped through defense there. What a play by Lawrence Hill, killing them softly with that one. Once a hawk, always the hawk. Hey, if he keeps doing good stuff, I'm going to keep mentioning it. Andy Lewis. Oh, had the cut, but didn't like the breakthrough. Now Hogan, but, but he throws it behind him. Lewis can't pull the trigger. You can see there, when they got the time to set it up, they wanted that isolation to Lester at the front of the end zone because she's got that short area quickness and burst to get away from defenders but couldn't see the window and then going with that difficult oyo through the oyo throw the blade through the inside out channel the the accuracy has to be pinpoint and on that occasion it wasn't Ten hacking centers to slob Ten hacking again Wide around, lots in the area, well taken by Slope. She puts it right away, Stanica there. But Connor Hogan is making plays today, ladies and gentlemen. First point in this game where we've had a side turn it over more than once, and both sides have turned it over twice. The tide's there, a turn and perhaps Hogan sends deep. Lewis is there, Lewis has read it well, and a perfectly weighted throw on the doorstep. Waiting for Wilson, pop pass. 
and that one counts for a big hold. That is clutch from Reading's O-line because 11-10 is a very different scoreline from 12-9. At that point, you're three behind and only need three to win, and it feels very tough. But twice they gave it away, and twice they earned it back. First, with the sticky handler coverage from Hill, and then while well, they couldn't punch in the red zone shot, playing on the margins, you could tell because there was the first throw to the sideline that was a, a fair few players in the area and then was tight, and then tried to blade it over the top of Connor Hogan, and Hoagie said no, stole it away, and then powered the offense once they got it back that final time with that big, deep bang. There's the uh, layout block from Hill. This is how Hrut earned it for the second time. This point just a bit behind Hogan there. And then this one from Ten Harken, close towards the sideline. A little bit of coverage, but maybe there with the defenders unable to catch up because they're right in each other's path. Takes the opportunity to put it out into space. It's a matchup that they like, Seneca against Hogan. But Hogan was able to get up nice and early, didn't fade it over towards that far side enough and really just gassed it to Lewis, who popped into Wilson for the score. Blasman to Ort, Ort upfield to Dam straight away. They've taken a lot of meters. Kulartz with the disc. Kulartz in for goal. Ben Ort gets the goal, and it's 12-10. Very quick and easy for Amsterdam this time. That's what you always want as a side when you're in the lead. You want those quick O points. You want to have to make sure that you're not giving your, op your opposition really any chance to break. Get them done with nice and quickly. Get the opposition O-line back out on the field and really try and make them have to grind. The quicker your O-line can get in and get out of there, the better. Indeed, those efficient points are very helpful in the late game. Get water bottles in hands. Get people calm and cool on the sideline. Ready to come back on and and work efficiently again. Get used to working efficiently. Get get used to scoring at ease. Feel good about it. Feel rested about it. It's only helping out. These were the replays from the previous point that we didn't have time to fit in because there were so many of them. And you see there, Lewis, he closes off the angle and then tries to accelerate towards the end zone. He thinks about going all the way and decides, actually, you know what? You've seen, we've seen it already this weekend. Players thinking about getting into the end zone and not enough about catching it. So I'm just going to secure it. I know that I've got backup anyway. And then that, unfortunately for, for Reading, didn't really generate enough pressure when Grit had the disc on that last O point. And now their O line is back out on the field. Roberts to Lewis. Lewis, oh, he was falling up, he did fall off his pivot. Almost faked himself out there. Roberts back to Lewis, far sideline, center field shot for goal. Joe Brown is there, that one counts. Reading makes an easy score out of their next hold. Lewis then powering the offense with that deep put to Joe Brown. Nice addition back for the, uh, for the European season. Joe Brown didn't actually go out to Cincinnati for that Reading side that finished in the top eight in the world, by the way. He's uh, not a flyer, not that he can't, I'm not saying that he can't jump, just that uh, he's chosen not to, he doesn't fly anymore, kind of wary of the environmental impact. So uh, fortunately for the European season, that's a lot less of a problem. And uh, yeah, they were very happy to have him back on the field at UK Nationals and here as well in a, at UCF and where Reading are making a hell of a final against Hrut. Here's the replay of that deep shot. Couple of steps for Joe Brown deep. So uh, yeah, doesn't even need to fly on that one. No need, just cash in your tickets. Redding set to pull. Big Noel with a disc in his hand. Groot O-line. Stock standard. Staniker crossing over. No breaks, by the way, since uh, Redding took us to a galaxy point. Blasman. A clean second half. Great pull from Redding. Waiting deep in his end zone. Now goes deep, 
and that's just a random haymaker. Steiniger and Bex Palmer get tangled up. I'm not sure it had an effect. They agree, turnover. That's the advantage that good pull gives you. You feel the pressure a little bit more when you're in your own end zone. And on the high stall, Blasman chose the hammer to no one. Poons. He goes deep right away. Bignall's there. He's got space. Will he have enough field? Yes, he does. Bignall with a big break. What was I saying? That, oh, we haven't had a break since Reading broke to take us to Galaxy Point. And as if on command, Reading deliver all set up from the pool, pinning her in their own end zone. You do feel it more when you're there, even if your offense feels like, you know, it's only a few yards. What difference does it make? It does make a difference because you don't want to give up the embarrassment almost of the Callahan. And on the high stall, Blasman thinks, what the hell? Just get it out of there. Maybe someone can bring it down. They couldn't. Coons picked it up quickly after the turn just to get the disc moving before the Reading defense, before the Hrit defense, excuse me, was set. There's no one marking him there, so he can probably step into and launch this throw. Bignall, again, as he did earlier in the game, catches for the break. Bignall making a big impact here. We talked about that being a potential difference, a, a, a difference in personnel. And having, you know, had the mini break that Hurt got coming out of half. Reading have earned a break back. The last three breaks have all gone Reading's way. The team's actually even on breaks now. The, uh, because Hurt got theirs in the first half, they kind of got that mini break. That means that they are still trading up at the moment. If uh, there were no more breaks, Hurt would win this, but tied at 12s. The final is delivering as we hoped it might. Oh. There was almost a snack on that. Oh, and there is an injury. Player down after the ground contact. Tenkate made a spectacular play with defense breathing down her neck. That When that went up, you could tell that the crowd were almost urging Klimer on to try and get this. Not necessarily through any rooting interest, because it felt like it was there. And as you mentioned, under pressure, Tenkata really goes and rips that beyond Klima, but must have taken a, just a heavy landing and will have to uh, leave the field. Rosie Coward, it looks like, is going to come on as the injury replacement. How much does she get to catch up is what they're discussing now because the injury was called slightly after they continued play. Yeah, I think, I think maybe Klima called it when she landed, but just no one, no one really heard. So it is going to go back here to Franca Tenkata. Sensible. Back in action, Tenkate. Centers to Wickman. Oh, big wind up at Janssen. She puts it away now upfield to Kularts. Pretty much to a member. All have those really powerful, expressive pump fakes. Ben Ort gets the easy under to Blossman. Blasman with a high stall count then goes to Van der Veden. They're trying to switch downfield to stop these big looks and while that's working, Krut doing a really good job of being patient and just taking those open players. Whitcomb to Blasman. Blasman to Ort. That one for goal. Jansen with the reception and the goal. Groot back in front, 13-12. You can tell what the intent there is from Reading. We want to slow Groot down, make them play the patient game. Can they find that? Can they work out who's poached? Can they hit those poached players? Do they have the mental strength to work it down when we take away that big play option that they love, that they sometimes crave on that time? Krut answered all the questions that Reading asked of them. 13-12. Getting to that pointy end here. Anybody's game. The next few points are going to sort out this championship. Reading's O-line hasn't necessarily been as clean as, uh, as Krut's had. Five turnovers to, to Hrutz three, but 
Reading have been able to earn a couple of those back. And every time Klutz Oline has given up the disc, they have been broken. Anything can happen here. Expect the unexpected. Connor Hogan, been making plays all day. Dumps that one back to Codron. Hogan makes a move for and gets the disc back. Bid on his hip. He goes deep right away. Wilson's there. He's got company. Oh, and company taketh away in this case. Stenica went for the bid. He didn't get it. And that gave Hogan the space to step into the throw. But it was good help defense there. And Wilson was the meat in the middle of a hurt sandwich. Sen Hagen will initiate the break opportunity. Groot already up by one. Ten Hagen goes to Lola Dam. Why not? Lola Dam around centering. Baradell back to Dam. Slob. A good fight in the dumb space. Wilson and Epstein going at it. That one floats. It is going to remain in the hands of Musquet. Stanaker Working hard to try and make this hammer deep. Ten Hagen is there. Great aggressive throw by Stanaker And Groot get the late break. Their first break since they made it 5-2. Reading had got three on them since that point. But we did say that Reading's O-line hadn't been as clean as Hurts had. And another turnover there, thanks to the good help defense. And then I think maybe catching them a little bit off guard with that scorching hammer across the end zone. Hogan really not getting a shot at it. Here's the turn. Hogan looking deep. Wilson's the receiver. And I think he maybe just gets caught a little bit underneath it. He's trying to turn as he's jumping. And it's knocked away by Epstein. That would be his third block of the game. The defensive captain. And then that hammer is wanged across the pitch from Stenica. And it's uh, Jasper Ten Harken making the catch for the score. If Reading want to win, they've got to get three on the spin. Three on the spin. They'll start with one. I've seen crazier things happen. I've seen crazy things happen today. Ain't that the truth? All the wild action coming at you all day long. Finals day, EUCF 2022. Grutz and the pull down to Reading Ultimate. Roberts with the disc. Roberts to Lewis. Lewis wanted the deep, but doesn't take it. Lester comes under. Lester to Codron. Bex Palmer winds up. She sends the big. Lewis is there. Defense not lo looking. And Lewis gets the cash in. They're two away now, Benji. Oh, I love that throw from Bex Palmer with a bit of a voluptuous inside-out shape on it, fading towards Andy Lewis. Brilliantly delivered. 14-13. That's the hold that Reading needed. Now they're going to try and need to get a couple of breaks. They, we've seen them do it three times this game, but they've not been able to string a train together. It's been one break and then have got it, have put it in on offense the next time afterwards. There's a little bit of this throw, it's a teaser and a tempter really, isn't it, from Palmer? Because there's a couple of defenders there that think they have the shot at it. But again, that edge is perfect. Takes it away from both Bohm and the help defender. Nothing they can do. Lewis Lewis pulls it down, 14-13. Timeout here on the field. Timeout. Uh, Groot. I, gonna, I mean, what's the chat in these timeouts right now? Benji, I mean, put your best line on. That's the first part. Whether they discuss it or not, coaches and uh, are thinking about who their seven are, be the seven best are, are for this job. For uh, uh, sorry, for Reading, absolutely you've got to put your best seven on because you cannot afford to concede. concede. With Hurt, I do wonder if maybe you keep the big players out there because if if you do get broken, you don't want to a give them put a little bit more wear in the legs. Not much. It's just one point I get. But maybe the confidence knock that they would take from getting broken in that clutch situation when they've got coming out on offense to win the game. You know, maybe that maybe that harms them. But I think 
this game's been played quickly enough. It doesn't feel like it's been agricultural. It's been clean enough that I feel like you can probably put your strongest line out there for the next two points. I, I, I tend to agree. I also think catering against that and saving a line shows a little bit of uh, diminished confidence. The, both teams right now are going to have their top seven on the field. Groot wants to end this game right now. No, there's no two ways about it. They don't want to play universe point, receive or not, advantage or not. They've already got that advantage. They got to do it, what they will with it now. Red Redding are ready here. They've got their top seven out and they are ready to spoil the party here, looking, sniffing, begging for that break. If you want a good idea of how quick and clean this game has been, 14-13, bear in mind 90 minute time caps. We've only just ticked over into 67 minutes. Goodness gracious, scorching pace of fish and dough. Blasman in his end zone. Last time he was there, he was not very comfortable. He's gone to Van Viden. Van Viden looks for a break. High stall counts in their end zone. Ort still in his end zone. Comes under, he'll be looking for the bigs as he always does. He goes wide, oh my goodness, Bignall was there, Staneker makes a play. Staneker gets it to Janssen. Janssen just outside of her end zone now, heavy pressure. Late, late bid by Coombs as Ort collects. Ort, Blastman in the dump space, he's still looking upfield, he's gone deep. Kulartz is there. Oh my goodness, Kulartz for the series, and it's gone, out of reach. And Redding with a chance to level this up late in the game, Benji. You can see what Ort wanted. He was like, nope, we're not gonna, we're not gonna muck around anymore. We're just gonna put it deep to floor culards. It always works. They've Why wouldn't it work? Except that time, just too much edge, took it away. Hagen was close enough that it, there wasn't a massive window to throw into. And he had potentially the swing, the easier option, but it just, and I mean just, out of Kulatz's grasp. Reading with the disc to take us to Universe. Wow, what a game we're seeing. Big Null checks in the disc, gets the up line, Max Palmer. Palmer having a look, Big Null loses his defender, winds up but does not give the big. Now, now it goes all the way across to Brown. <laughs> Brown handles it get, and gets the up line. Handling it better than your voice at the yes, moment, indeed. Steph. We're losing everything here. Big null. Big null up and then centers to Ryle again. Uh, Ryle gets it from Coons there. They are nearing this end zone. Big null has to get low and then straight, straight in. We are going to Universe Point, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you need. Bonkers weekend, last game of the tournament, Universe MF in point. Oh. Here we go. Oh my goodness, this is insanity. Redding pulling out all the stops at the right moment. I love the feeling that comes with these late mounting charges. There is nothing like it. And we're in the greatest moments of Ultimate are right in front of us. They're happening as we speak and watch. Those last two breaks for Reading have come because, in part, they've pinned Hrit in deep. The first came directly from that. The second, it just means it's such a slog to go all the way. And there, there's the break down the far side to Bignall and the two talismans, Bignall and Palmer, combined for the score. And who has the advantage now? The momentum that comes with the two, the two scores in a row, that comes with the break, even though they play defense again, Reading, or the receiving four champ champion, defending champions, Groot. It's interesting here. Ben Ort has had a monster game offensively. You know, three goals, six assists, but he has thrown a couple of turnovers, including that one there. Do you still give him the license to go out there and shoot? I'd be really surprised if they didn't. He is the license giver. I think he will continue. Shooter's got to shoot. 14-12. I saw that scoreline in Tom's tournament while Isno were down to Clapham. And one of the most rewarding last three points I had ever been a part of uh, as Isno provided there. We've seen Universe Point just today in the open game. Ranala made a wonderful charge and stormed back and took a game. 
By the way, just over 20 minutes till time cap comes on. Like, this game has been so god darn good. Here we are, Universe Point, Van der Weide into Blasman. Blasman has a look in his end zone on the line. Kulart goes deep, Van der Weide. Back to Blasman, they're playing back and forth on their own goal line. Or is was suspiciously open, Benji. Andy Lewis is selling out for everything on that force. If you've got any dodgy deals, talk to him right now because he's buying it. He, he's Spending just, liberally. Just whatever he can, he's n determined not to let a dangerous throw go off. Blasman as Ort sends at a pace the other way. Jansen comes under. Jansen fakes the big. That nothing coming. Wick up there, Lola Dam, that's up and over. Oh, that is a dangerous play. And Ryle knew it. That is a very dangerous play. We see how hard he's working for that D, but he had to stop there. Uh, that was, he was coming across the wrong direction and over pursuit. Yeah, that's flows too far, so uh, Dam has to chase it down. It opens the door for Ryle to come in. And I think by the time by the time you can see that there's going to be a collision, it's a, it's a little bit too late. Let's see how Reading defense adjusts quickly back to Ort. Again, shows the spirit between these two sides because instantly, hands up in apology from There Royal. it is. Ort sends to Blasman. Lewis on the chase. Blasman can't read it. Oh my goodness. Lewis with the disc now after the misread by Blasman. But wow. Lola Dam is not giving this one away. Blasman picks up on the doorstep. Benjamin Ort having a look, directing traffic, asking for calm. Nothing calm about it. Goes to Kulart. That is the game. It is Grip 15, Reading 14. And Reading had the disc on Universe. The first time we'd seen Blasman go deep all game. The closing speed from Andy Lewis got it in front, got the disc back, but then Lola Dam would not be denied. She refused to be denied. A layout block, Palmer held up just a smidgen enough for not to, not Lola Dam to burst through the door, but to absolutely ram it down and stand ominously in the frame and then afterwards rather than just get the force in it's that little cheeky break getting around the force squeezing it through the inside channel to floor culars and 15 reading 14 in the final in the best game i have seen since maybe this morning yes, <laughs> that's just okay. how mad finals day has been but if you want i mean I don't think you'll find a better example of what we want to showcase here on Ulti TV than that game. Back and forth, clean from both sides. Here is the game-defining block. I think Palmer doesn't oh. realize how close Dam is to bearing down on that one. And then you see it here, just dished off to Ort. Lewis kind of comes on on the force. Ort trying to clear out a little bit of space, and it's just the one jab step, go. No chance for Hagen to close the window. The only question is, does Ort stay true on his form, on the throw? And that he does. Crit win another European title, but my God, Reading made them work for it. Did they ever. There is not much more we could have asked for in that game. We got the runs, we got the comeback, we got option chances on both sides disc in hand to win the game for both sides. It's going to, yes, it'll sting for Reading, but there is no shame in what they've done. They've gone to toe-to-toe -to -toe with not just the best team in Europe, one of the best teams in the world, and they have come up inches short. But, my God, what a game in terms of the, the swings, in terms of, I mean, the quality, the quality of that game. 15, 14, 75 minutes. That sort of thing just does not happen. That's so quick. 30 the, points, 29, sorry, 29 points. There were, two, there were two points all game in which both sides turned it over. There was only one point in which in which any side turned it over more than once, and that point where both sides turned it over twice. Otherwise, in a, uh, let me do the maths here, 
in in 29 points we've seen eight turnovers aside like come on man that's ridiculous and this might be a bit of a killer for Reading by the way that turnover there from the D-line that's the first time their D-line had turned over all game unbelievable that's how good this game was man I barely had the voice and in some cases didn't have the voice to finish that game we've been leaving it all on the field as well Benji on, on the mics and I'm gonna let you finish up here <laughs> I got nothing left we're giving it all Honestly, it has been a bonkers, bananas weekend here in Caorle, Italy for EUCF 2022. That brings a close to the European outdoor club season. But here on OTTV, we are not finished yet because in a couple of weeks' time, we're off to the Algarve, Portimao, Portugal, the venue for the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships, making a triumphant return after four years away when we were on the shores of Castel de Fels in Spain for what was the best finals day I have ever seen. Five, oh, universe, po point. five <laughs> universe point games in that a row. Insane. Three of them in for the championship. Absolutely ridiculous. And then the team stays there as well because we're also bringing you coverage of the World Grandmasters Ultimate, Cl Ultimate Champ Club Championships. Oh, and by the way, there is also European Indoors coming up in Lithuania, I think, in December. And you know damn well that Ult TV is going to do their utmost to be that be there covering that as well. And here is the game ceiling score one final time. Just... What a break here. I mean, that he, he knew what he wanted. He's pulling everybody out. Isolated floor. And I mean, if you're if you're Hagen, I mean, what can you do there? Like, uh, I mean, no. And, and he did even have a nice diving block attempt there, but just zero. zero what can you do? Zero shame. Our Ulti TV crew has been phenomenal this weekend, killing it on the coverage despite weather problems, technical problems, anything it seems that could throw us a little bit of uh, maybe Sam Murphy's Law. It's been that kind of week, but they have been brilliant. Our camera crew, our editors. I'm going to try and list everyone off, and I will yep. invariably fail. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we have uh, Lucia, Eris, Luna, Noah, Lolo, uh, Felix, Milan, Chips, uh, Ian Trand. We have uh, Finn, who is literally standing right in front of me as well. So that would have been bad. Uh, we had the birthday boy from yesterday, Nick, as well, for our uh, for our various commentary crew who have been admirable this week. Sean Colfer has been wonderful to have alongside us. Our full time commentary crew. Well, we had Luke Burgess. Uh, Hannah Pendlebury, who did the women's final for you, Ravi Vasudevan and Lorcan Murray on the open final. Of course, the big dog, Steph Rapazzo himself for that we scorcher. We play in every final. We play, we're in every final. For the yes. mixed final and myself, Benji Reese. it has been a brilliant weekend, long weekend here in Kaurula, and we cannot thank you enough for being with us. It's been unbelievable. Cameras going left, right and centre. Best crew in the game. If you want to support Ulti TV, doing this sort of thing more frequently, bringing games like this to the people, not behind any sort of paywall, for free on YouTube Live and on demand for posterity. And I know you want to do that, then you can uh, donate directly now on YouTube now through Super Chats and stickers. But I cannot recommend enough becoming a member of our Patreon and for as little as the price of a pint of beer or maybe a bottle of finest Italian Prosecco a month. You can choose, but honestly, make it happen, make it happen everybody. Big, big love from Aldi TV. We got nothing but love, love for all our viewers. Yeah, thanks to all our sponsors as well. Uh, Ger we've got Gerard Street with the headphones. Uh, Four Sportswear who provided our swanky oh, new good. gear, which looks brilliant. Uh, Tokai Cleats, uh, Eurodisc, uh, the European Ultimate federation as well for putting the tournament on and always being so collaborative letting us do what we love there's lucia killing it on cam one as usual i think that's about it it's about time we head to the bar we'll see you there we'll see you at the bar everybody pints 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 OTTV. we'll see you in the winner's circle
だね